We're driving the 2021 SQ5. Yes. But it's the Sportback. It is the Sportback. It's the extra model mm -hmm. that you forgot about. The extra model that we needed, apparently. We needed well, more Sportbackedness. We do. And what it ends up being is really just a tall car. Oh, yeah. That's all the Sportback really is. Oh, because yeah. if you look at the A3 or the A5, it's got that kind of shape. It's got that kind of overall sensibility. Okay. But if you want better seating, taller torso, it does have that. Yeah. But this is what people are buying. And it just is a tall car. It's mm -hmm. like cars used to be in the 40s. You know how tall they were? We're kind of back to that with the Sportback. We're back to that with SUVs in general. Yeah. This whole five-seat SUV world is all, almost always just lifted hatchbacks. And this is a little more swoopy lifted hatchback. <laughs> Yay, swoopy hatchback. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. Now, this is fast. It is quick. The SQ5 gives you the V6 3 liter turbocharged. Mm -hmm. Yep. 349 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. It actually really moves. It does. It does. Which I like. Mm -hmm. But then it has an eight speed automatic transmission. Only on the SQs, by the way. The lower models yeah. have a seven. Yeah. If you want the dual clutch, you have to go to the two liter, just the regular Q5. You can't get the S. Mm -hmm. And it does give you the dual clutch, but mm -hmm. this is the eight-speed auto. Yep. And it has many dynamic drive selects here. Yes. But they all correspond to ride height. Mm. They don't really correspond to driving character. Because this, as it is, is fairly unremarkable in driving. It's good. It's fine. And it's on a chassis that shares the same, uh, the same platform as the Bentega and the Lamborghini Urus and the Porsche Cayenne, the current generation, and the Q8. And so it does share good company. But I want it to be more because this as it is, I feel like is the congratulations, you didn't get the raise, you didn't make director, maybe middle mm. management to afford a kind of sporty SUV, but not the one you really want. Mm. That is all the rest that are built on this same platform. It's almost there, it's the Audi almost. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when we started the show, I had an 04 A4 Avant Ultra Sport. Yeah. Now it was an automatic, but that chassis was a passenger car chassis, so it was completely different. Mm -hmm. But the Quattro all wheel drive system was split 50 50 front to rear all the time. Yes. There was no drive select, there was no mode, there wasn't even a sport mode. It just is what it is, what it is, what it is. The car was just mode. It was just. Just, just turn it on, it, this is mode. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I loved about Quattro. I love mm -hmm. that this is what Quattro meant. It was glued to the earth all the time, 100%, 50-50. It was them and Subaru doing yes. that and nobody else. If I'm buying Quattro, that's what I want it to do. That's what I want it to mean. This sends like 85% to rear, doesn't it? Push it that can. Much? Uh, when it, when it feels like the, the weather conditions are right, it'll go 85% right. to rear. Yeah. Right. A lot of sensors going on on this car. Yeah. It, is, it is sensor crazy. In fact, to the point, we're driving in the snow. Mm -hmm. We've been driving in the snow. We, we picked the one clear day we've had in weeks <laughs> to drive this car, honestly. Yes, yeah. And anytime I drove this in a snowstorm, what happens in a snowstorm, like an actual snowstorm? The front of your car gets Drifting? covered in snow. No, with that, oh. that is what, especially with all seasons. Oh, yes. But the front of your car gets covered in snow. If you've ever driven in the snow, as soon as the front of this car gets covered in snow, it loses all of its sensors. It goes blind, and then it yeah. freaks out. Yeah. And I just kept thinking the whole time I was doing it, and the sensors were bonging and freaking out, and the car was like genuinely Stupid alarmed. Bonging. My sensors. son got alarmed, like, why is the car really? concerned? He was like, what's going on? I said, buddy, it can't see, and it's freaking out. <laughs> but my question is, was there never snow on the test route ever? Nothing is really going on, it's just the car thinks. I mean, are, are we only testing cars now in Arizona? Is that all that's happening, where there's like yeah. no weather ever, it's just always the same? Because you, I mean, yes. it's a German car, It ha they have to have snow. It snow. snows in Ingolstadt. Yes. It's not? But it but snows there. The whole reason you get an all-wheel drive SUV theoretically is to have adventures. One of those might involve yeah. snow. Yeah. I it went blind and it lost its mind. I'm telling you. In a snowstorm. It was like it's just it wasn't like a blizzard either. It was like I have to go get groceries. There's snow. Blind freak out. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Drive select is right down here. And fortunately, you can cycle through. So if you keep pushing the down or the up arrow, you can, you can cycle through everything here. So now we're in dynamic, and that does have, this car does have the adaptive suspension and the air suspension. Yes. But one thing that's missing that it does not have is the dynamic handling package. Mm. And I don't understand, short of 
a desire to make money in adding extra packages, <laughs> why an SQ5 wouldn't just come with that package or it's not even a package, it's just built into the steering rack. It's just part sure, of the car. Sure. I can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. Again, short of just wanting to have all the extra packages to sell you we an upgrade. We gotta charge you more, yes. come on. I mean, there's, there's, that, this is business, man. <laughs> if you want those extra things, you have to check an extra box. Audi presents. You're sensing some ice on the sensors. No, it sensed the. Did you notice it went off when the oncoming traffic went by in a corner? It's that kind of thing. You think it was the truck? I think it was the truck that went by. It thinks you were going to get in a collision because there's traffic over there. This is this is the problem. It is sensor crazy, but they're not as intuitive as they should be, and they don't deal with real world conditions like I don't know winter. <laughs> oh, there it is again. Yeah. The, oh. Maybe it sensed the car that was far away. I don't know. Just pay attention. Winter has flummoxed this car. I'm telling you. It's just what a no great idea. word. Yes, flummoxed is a great word for this situation. It's just blind and it don't doesn't know what to do. Don't get to that word nearly okay. enough hey. in a sentence. Audi SQ5, we're flummoxed. <laughs> That's fantastic. There we are. All right, so we're in dynamic mode and yeah, it moves. It's good. Like I said, it's not particularly remarkable in how it behaves on road. It's good and you can tell that this is where your dollars went to make an SUV that feels sure, good going sure. fast. Yeah, and that's yeah. what the price indicates. But as far as other SUVs that this would compete against, that I think your dollar would be better spent against, include that Volvo XC60, yes. but also the Genesis GV70. Agreed. And also the Mazda CX-5 Grand Touring with a turbo for oh, about, that's fair. I don't know. $25,000 less. Yeah, and with the turbo, it's got actually almost similar horsepower number. I mean, well, actually, torque numbers. It's torque got 320 numbers, yeah. torque. It's like a T50 yeah, yeah. horsepower. It's still down on horsepower. But, but it's, it's still, still it's a six-speed that's really good. That, yeah. I hadn't thought of that one. That's a good competitor, especially when you consider the massive price savings. Hey, dear. There a she deer. is. Yep. Just hanging out. <laughs> have you ever seen a deer eat it? I never have. I mean, short of being they're hit by a car. They're surprisingly agile. That got dark quick. Anyway. <laughs> just want to see a deer face plant. Yikes. <laughs> Alright, to put it in park, it's a button on mm -hmm. the shifter and it moves over itself. If you're in manual mode, it'll Great. electroactuate back to where it should be. There's another good word, electroactuate. <laughs> That's something we don't get to use enough either. Don't. Flummox and electro actual. What else get the, by the time we're sure. done? We'll have a list of words not <laughs> we'll used enough in car reviews. Worry. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, so when you're sitting in the interior, you think, okay, pretty nice Audi, but I want more. Mm -hmm. In terms of today's marketplace, kind of feels stale and old. And 20 years ago, 25 years ago, Audis were the newest, the hottest thing. Mm -hmm. They taught everybody in the car yes. industry yes. how interior should be. But this interior feels like they've been coasting. It feels like they're still kind of resting on their laurels and they haven't really pushed it. Take, for instance, the screen. You'll mm -hmm. recognize the Volkswagen MIB3 interface, which is almost there. It's now in color, fortunately. But really, you want a device plugged in. It's asking you constantly, plug in a device. Mm -hmm. Never before have I seen cars wanting you to plug in a device. Please, Connect don't your rely phone. on my own. I can't operate unless your phone is plugged in. So the screen just seems very tacked on. It doesn't seem mm -hmm. very nicely integrated into the design, even though the shapes are nice. Well, in 10 years ago, everybody was tacking their screens on, and now everybody's yes. trying to figure out how to integrate them. And here we are back to one that just looks like, well, just stick an iPad on the dash, and we'll call it a <laughs> is day. Is it centered? That's good enough. <laughs> now sit in the back, double check. Yeah, it's centered enough. It's We're good. good. So all the controls you'll recognize as sort of Audi-ish, but they mostly feel like high-end Volkswagen. Agreed. And that's my big problem with it. Shifter, you know, all the materials. A, a fully loaded GTI is this good inside. I agree. Short of the quilted leather seats, and the seats are very good, by the way. But the interior, the, the ride height, the, the amount of space, short of, you know, the not really great spacious rear end, but the seat height is great and the seating position is good. It's just not a standout. And that's my biggest issue with it. There's nothing really awfully wrong with this except for the dynamic view mode that doesn't show your gas gauge. There's never a time where I don't want to see my gas gauge. Ever. <laughs> I always want to see my gas gauge at all times, every time. But other than that, the interior is nice. There's good materials. It mm -hmm. seems very well engineered mm -hmm. and strong. It's very Volkswagen. It's very likable. But yeah, it just seems like a gussied up Volkswagen. 
and I don't know how gussied up it is. I have thoughts, thoughts <laughs> it's, over it's there. It's a but little I, bit gussy. A little bit. I mean, a but little I, bit of But to your point, gussied. though, the current GTI, you buy a current GTI loaded out for 40 yeah. grand. Yeah. You save $26,000 off of this, and I don't think you get in this and go, oh, this is such a nicer interior. I think it's about the same. That Mazda, that CX-5, you get in, you think, wow, how much did you pay? I totally this agree. pretty nice. Yep. You paid $25,000 left for the fully loaded CX-5. This is a really competitive segment. In fact, this yeah. is the most competitive yeah. segment. Yeah. The small five-seat SUV comes in every variety you can possibly think of, from every manufacturer you can think of, and every price you can think of. <laughs> and now you have yes. Audi doing yes. the sportier, sexier version of something they already have. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable how many there are. So you have to be a standout, and I do think that's this car's struggle. You must try this. I will. It dawns on me mm -hmm. that besides the fact that the jackets are back, because guess what? It's winter the again jackets in Park are back. City. It also brings up something else we may have to bring back, and that is, will it drift? That's a, that's a winter winter treasure that we do. It's just a little, little funny <laughs> little winter, winter thing we do treasure. when it's all-wheel all drive. And, and the, all, the answer is, yes, it will drift. But it's we should, like we Christmas ornaments. It. It you got to get out the decorations. It's the season. Will tis, it drift? It is the season for it will is. it drift. We should do that. That's a great idea. Like we do on all of these, I, I drive it for a while and then I try to think about, okay, what's the cost and what could you get for the same money elsewhere? Yeah. Who, who's this for? So I'm driving this SQ5 and my initial impressions are, anytime I drove it, I was like, this is excellent. There's nothing it's inherently great. wrong with it's it. Great. Yeah. They did a really good job. The materials are nice. The seats are good. It's got a surprising amount of back seat space. Yeah. Not great, yeah. but surprisingly good considering the sloped back. Now you lost cargo space, of course, but it just feels perfectly nice to drive. Yeah. So then I have to dig down a bit okay. into price okay. and into competition. Love it. And then it gets sticky. <laughs> then we have problems <laughs> because the problems reveal themselves in the competition. $66,000. You already said it. The GTI feels as nice as this inside for Does. significantly less. Lots of things feel this nice inside for less. For less, yeah. This feels like a Volkswagen product. And mm -hmm. look, Volkswagen mm -hmm. does fantastic interiors. You look at a $30,000 Volkswagen next to most of its competitors, you think, this is really nice in here. But this is twice as much as most Volkswagens. And at that point, I should feel like I stepped up. And I don't. Now, the <laughs> upper level stuff, except for the, the yeah. tape pasted on screen, feels okay. But the lower you get in the cabin, this is a classic Volkswagen trick. The lower you get in the cabin, the cheaper it starts to feel and look. Mm -hmm. Like, pan your eyes down and it just starts to get more and more, uh-oh, as you get low. I'm serious. <laughs> it's a more problem. More and more yes. concerning. So that is, yeah. that is a big thing, is that this doesn't feel like the interior of a $66,000 SUV. So then I flip it around. But wait, it's the performance model. It's the, it's the go-fast model. Right. It's the luxury performance. Oh, okay, now we have another problem. The okay. Mercedes GLC, if you really want German go-fast, Mercedes GLC yeah. AMG. That's good. Not the, not the super big boy, but the step down is about this same price. It's mm -hmm. around 70. Mm -hmm. But the real right. problem the is 43, in, the GLC 43. The real problem and is in fast. Volkswagen's own world, and that is the Macan. Now the Macan has smaller back seats. Yeah, yeah. But not hugely smaller. It's not like, whoa, you can't use sure. it. If you're sure. buying a small five-seat SUV that is a performance SUV that is kind of the family car, but mainly it's just a performance little hatchback looks like an SUV, and you've got 70 grand to spend. Tall car. You should be looking at the Macan. If you want German yeah. Volkswagen, yeah. that has flavor this lacks. It's that has dynamics yeah. this lacks. And the prices are similar enough, I think Volkswagen kills itself in its own product book with the Macan. It's funny you bring that up because I was thinking similarly, and of all the different vehicles that all these platforms share, mm -hmm. what is the difference? What makes that Porsche a Porsche? Well, it's chassis tuning, it's suspension yes. and steering input. It's that drivability. They spend a lot of time making it and living up to that Porsche standard. I'm not trying to trumpet their own horn here, but 
if you're buying a Porsche, there is a certain level. Now, same with Audi. It's got to mm -hmm. be yeah. another step better than many Volkswagens. But is it? I, I'm the, not mm. convinced that it is. And that uh, GV80, even though it doesn't even compete in this class, that was fully loaded at $66,000. Yes, and now you've got more room. Yes, more I agree room. With that. It yeah. did feel like a magical spaceship on the inside. This has power, but it needs to take a couple of big breaths before it really gives it to you. Sure. It, you know, some, and look, I've got it set to sporty goodness, you know. It, sometimes with turbos, no, that's not fair. All the time with turbos, <laughs> they have to gather themselves. Yeah. This yeah. feels like it gathers itself one extra breath to what I expect. It's got plenty of power. Before it gives you the beans. But it's just like, <gasps> boom! Instead of like the full inhale, it's like, give me just two full inhales and I'm, I'm there with you. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, it's going to be great. And it is good. Just you wait. But here's the thing. You get a Macan S. Uh -huh. You have very similar uh -huh. power breakdowns, but faster zero to 60. Yeah. It feels more up on its toes. It feels more dynamic. You still wound up German luxury and frankly Volkswagen group for God's sakes. Yes, yeah, exactly. You, you exactly. didn't even leave the overall parent brand. I mean, yes, maybe you say Mercedes aren't, aren't reliable or I would never drive a Mercedes, but a Porsche, you're still in Volkswagen group. I That's think true. they have completely killed themselves in their own market. This is this market for the person that only buys Audis. I hate to say it. I want the sexy one from mm. Audi. We drove the QX55 recently. Yeah. The sport back That's looking right. thing from Infiniti. And you know right. what? I can't say outside of the fact that Audi might be a more luxurious brand than Infiniti that that's not a, that that's not a worse car. It's not a worse car. That's a good one. That that's one works really just fine. One. So then I have to yeah. flip around to let's save money. And this okay. is where the GV70 shines. Yeah. And that Mazda CX-5 shines. Yeah. Because I don't think you lose much in dynamics, but you gain so much more in benefit to budget. Your wallet feels so much better. And inside, you're fine. You have, you're not looking <laughs> around you going, better. I stepped down. Yeah. You should feel, yeah. in the Mazda CX-5 and the GV70, you should feel like I stepped down in quality and interior materials, and I don't think you do. Now, maybe in six or 10 years, they don't hold up as well. Maybe. I'll, I'll just put that out there as sure, a possibility. Maybe. But most people that are buying at this level at $60,000, $70,000 aren't going to keep a car that long. Yeah. It's attractive, and there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. You drop out of space into this, and you just say, drive it. You don't think about the competition, and there's really nothing I can point to and go, that's bad. It actually rides really well. A lot it of does. performance SUVs yeah. don't ride well. Oh, they're just like they're rattly, suspension. and there's too much. Yeah. Yeah. This rides very well. It's fairly quiet, but it is so middle of the road for a high price. And if I want a high price, the AMG or the Porsche badge and yeah. the Porsche tuning start to matter at that high price. Otherwise, I'll just save the money. There will always be the price overlap. Yes. From here to yes. eternity, mm -hmm. on all kinds of models, there will always be that. But we're looking for the standout. If it costs this much, mm -hmm. then make it justifiable. Something that makes it worth that price mm -hmm. to you, the buyer. Yeah. Because here it is, as you said, it's good. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with this at all. It's it really just isn't. not remarkable and a standout no. in either above or below $10,000 in any direction. Which is concerning, even though I think I have an answer. Okay. I'm going to try. Oh, wow. All right. I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm going to try. I'll drive, but I will listen as well. I'm excited. I mean, look, I love Audis. Mm -hmm. I love Quattro. I love their history. I love their Le Mans history. Audis are awesome. I love the Group B from 1985. The, the Quattro, the we, real we, Quattro. Yeah, we all do. We all, that's, that was a soft spot car, for that, for sure. Every yeah. car enthusiast mm -hmm. loves that, right? Yeah. So Audis are cool. Yes. But Audi has said, for the future, they are leaving internal combustion engines behind. They are going to be a brand that is mm -hmm. all electric, as evidenced by the fake exhaust tips. This is not news. <laughs> but I just was reminded again the fake exhaust tips. There's four of them. You have invested in tooling for a trim piece that does nothing. It says times, it should do something. It does nothing times four. It does nothing <laughs> times four. You have created four <laughs> fake things, not just one. Oh, that's too Four good. of them. There's two returns. There's a muffler and just a downpipe out the back underneath the car. The exhaust tips, you can't even see through them. They're plugged up. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting us used to Audi's electric future. Yeah. And I guess this is where it starts. 
even though they've got something that could be better. Make the interior a little bit more interesting. Take the materials up. Make the screen not quite so tacked on and make it justifiable for $66,000. It's yeah. fast, it's got good power. Yeah. It drives well, make it drive even better. Why is the dynamic handling package not on this one? Mm. Why is it even an option? It just seems like a kind of me too. It just, it's an entry they into forgot the segment. about it. It's an entry into the segment. And yeah. the problem is that was how we felt when we drove the Infinity. Yeah. QX55, it was their entry into the segment. And Although that Audi one kind of surprised. Coming along, it surprised, but mm, I, mm, it, this is the problem with this area is we have to offer a five seat SUV. Now we have to offer a coupe version. Oh, what are they doing over there? Oh, we should do that too because the brand is doing that. Well, at least in the winter time though, we can constantly invest in will it drift? And you yes. know what? It will. Get out the decorations. Have you noticed this interior bucket here is not suitable for anything? <laughs> it's the wrong size for everything. It's not a phone. It's not, it's a, phone. not a cup holder. Nope. The, too big for your keys. <laughs> too big for your keys. Change is going to wallow around in yes. there. It just collects mm -hmm. dirt and litter. You know what it is? That's it's it. Like it, it. You know what it's approximately the size of? A deck of cards or a pack of cigarettes, neither of which are going to find their way into cards it's anymore. It's true. You're not going to be playing cards and you probably don't smoke anymore. So I don't know who. And that, yeah, that. Yeah, it's not a lighter. That's not it's even just a lighter. A cover. So I, it's like. What is this? Somebody smoked and they were like, I'll pick, put a pack of cigarettes <laughs> in there. And it just got by everybody else. They're like, oh, it's a perfectly good size. No, it's not. I mean, could you fill Only it with popcorn? That. Could you just fill it with popcorn? <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Just the popcorn bowl. There you go. Audi, now with popcorn bowl. Yeah.